Welcome everyone to episode 1 of the Black Desert 1 hour grind series. We are starting today with Pilaku Jail, so let's get right into it. Okay, let's get into the rules and things you should know before we hop into the grind. First, the rules. I will be spending one hour at the specified area, as the title states. Hour will be timed with an item collection, loot scroll. During the hour, I will consume multiple beast drops and a simple crone meal. My class, gear, gear score, and level will all be shown before the grinding begins. The amount of enemies killed will be tracked with Marnie Stones when I see them at the grind spots easily available. I will check in about halfway through the hour to update the grind and show the rotational spot I am running at. Money earned and special drops will all be recapped at the end of the hour. Beast drought, simple crone meals, and potions will not be factored into the end profit. Things you should know. I play on Xbox. I am not the best grinder out there. Routes and rotations are not optimal. Same as skills and skill usage, they are also not optimal. The time spent at the location will be an hour, but actual grind time will vary, will range around 50 to 55 minutes. Different classes obviously will farm these areas at different speeds. And finally, I play the game for fun, so I'm not concerned with min-maxing everything I do within the game. Alright guys, now that we've gone over the rules and things to know, time to get into pre-grind here. So we are outside Pilaku Jail, which if you open up your map and you come over here and find Valencia City, it is just south and a little bit right. Right there is Pilaku Jail. I found it best to aim for Donna Rocky Mountain, follow it down to Oberon's Villa, and then Pilaku Jail. So I always aim my character from Valencia City. I always come out right here aim it to the right a little bit, aiming more towards Oberyn's, and then I know if I miss right, I'll be at Donna Rocky Mountain, and if I miss left, I'll be at Pilaku Jail. So, going over the gear on the character here, we currently have Tet, often Tet's Radiant Amulet, um, we have Kudum Talisman Tet, the uh, Awakening Weapon doesn't matter because I'm using Succession Sork, we have a Tet Gaius Helmet, we have a Tri Red Nose's Armor, a Tri Muskin Shoes, and a Tet Begs Gloves. Moving on to the accessories, we have Tri Tungrad Earrings, Kaposha Earrings, Tri Ogre Ring, Kaposha Ring, Tri Eye of the Ruins Ring, and Kaposha Belt, as well as we'll be using the Changa Shuriken Tome of Wisdom. Not going to matter a whole lot for this, but wanted to mention that it'll be on. These are the beast drops that we're going to be using as well as the simple crone meals. Obviously we will only need to pop one simple crone meal while farming and I'll probably only end up popping three of the beast drops, not four. Even though it is an hour, we'll only be popping three. Moving on down to the bottom here, we have the potions. We're going to be using extra large. I have the fairy equipped to auto refill my mana at 40 percent and so she will go ahead and do that when i get low so those will end up getting used uh during this also i will be popping extra xp scrolls for skill points because i need extra skill points so extra skill xp it is and we will also be popping one of these combat and skill xp 530 percent scrolls as well as an item collection increase scroll have a bunch of these, never really use them, so they're going to be what is used to track the timer. I'll pop it last, and when it runs out, we will call it a day. Uh, other than that, stuff that will be active is Blessing of Camasilv, as well as Sealed Book of Life, because I have so many of these, I need to use them, so they will be active. They don't do a whole lot except for the boosted drop rates as well as a secret book of old moon will also be equipped because I have a ton of these obviously. So we're going to be popping those as well. In terms of pets, I have five pets. So we'll be picking up all the items uh, perfectly fine with my pets. Now, moving on to the items that you can acquire here at Pilaku Jail, we have five items I'm gonna go over on top of the trash loot and all of that different stuff. The, the this, the magical stones 
any of those things that you can get. Not going to go over those, but we have five main items that we'll be looking for of high value. We have Cecil's Necklace, which goes for $6 million on the Xbox Marketplace. I don't know what these things go for on PC or if they fluctuate a little bit on the PS5, but Cecil's Nexus is $6 million. Um, kind of like a step down from the top tier of necklaces, but still a very good one to acquire. Black Magic Crystal of Swiftness currently goes for $5.6 million. Black Spirit's Claw Pieces go for $24 million as listed, but they probably should go for more as there are none on the auction or on the central market, and there's a bunch of bids placed for them. Part of the Explorer's Compass, like the Black Spirit's Claw piece, none are listed on the Central Marketplace, but there aren't a whole lot of orders in, so they go for about $4 million. And then finally, we have Cafras. They go for $2.2 million, and they will probably be the most common, I would guess, out of all of the things that I just listed. A chart showing you all the various things, hopefully it's up to date, uh, is up on the screen. Um, if you're interested in any of the other interesting loot that you can acquire here. I think that's all for the opening here. I mean, the gear score I needed to go over, I guess. 244 AP, 295 DP, Awakening, obviously, like I said, does not matter because I'm not using my Awakening weapon. If you wanted to know, I did have the Ultimate Spell of Seduction Scythe while I was using Awakening. But now that I'm using Succession, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't do anything for me because I'm not using it. I think that's everything we needed to go over here. We're going to input some, because this is the first episode, I'll go over this a little bit right now. There will be a little bit of a montage of fighting and whatnot here, and then for about a couple minutes, then I'll cut back in and update you on how it's going and what rotation I have discovered that I like. Then I will cut away again, we'll do another couple minutes of a farming montage, and then I'll come back and we'll recap this all up for you guys. Uh, the series won't just be on my Sork, we'll switch off to different characters to go to different zones. If you would like to know now, the very next area that we're going to do is going to be on my Nova, and it will be down here at Bashim's base. I don't know why I always call it Bashim's, it's Basham base, there is no S, don't ask me why I always say it with an S. But that will be the next location that we go. Uh, I think that covers everything we needed to go over uh, before we get started. So I will catch you guys about half an hour from now. Alright guys, so it's time for our midway update. Uh, tried to find a safe spot, but there really isn't a place to hide, so we're going to get interrupted. But let me hop into my inventory here and you guys can see what we've got so far. We've got 2.7k of the trash loot, 11 trace of violence, 10 rusty iron pieces, I mean nothing big, 1 Kafra stone, we have 5 of the scroll written in an ancient language, 1 Lila's petal, one charred rock fragment from the event, and one blackstone weapon. So nothing insane so far, but we've still got a decent amount of stuff. So here is the rotation I've been running through the first half hour. I will try to find a different rotation as we go. 
but at, for the second half hour, just to get a little bit of something different, but this has been the rotation that I have been running. It starts about, well, you'll see. I'll show the whole, the whole little rotation here. I don't kill these guys as quick or as fast as I thought I would, but still not terrible. I do get stun locked a little bit here and there, but overall not terrible farm, but not great at the same time. So I do end up leaving a handful of guys behind because of the speed that I kill. I don't kill quite fast enough for my liking, and so I end up um, forfeiting a little bit of um, damn, or forfeiting a little bit of experience and loot in order to kill, to move on to bigger mobs faster, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So it ends up being a little bit uh, less than optimal, but like I said, optimization, not my main goal. I have to enjoy the farm spots in order to be willing to grind them for hours, so fun is more important than anything. So you can see I left that one executioner behind because I pretty much know that it's not worth my time to kill him. Pretty much. If I could like two shot him, I would change my thought process there, but I don't, so it's how we have to do things here. And we are, actually, I started this and we started getting more ancient uh, scrolls, which is nice. Might actually end up just keeping those and using them, since technically they were free. I need to do more of killing these, like, miscellaneous articles and stuff like that, as... I have that as like a side quest here. I need to kill 30 of them. We have 27, so I'm sure I'll get there within the hour. But this is a pretty easy rotation here. It's just a circle, and with my speeds being a little bit slower to kill the enemies, it works out fairly well. Because by the time I get back around, they will all be um, respawned. I haven't had a single point where I've where it's even been close. I also need to kill more of these Kafras followers, but I don't really think... They're all, like, solo, the Kafras followers, so I don't honestly think it's all that worth it to kill them. I do need to kill that, because that's quick. Did have to kill some of those coffins, but you come back up here and we're about back to where we were. And it's just been pretty pretty chill grind. I This grind isn't too bad. The circle's real easy to run. And so I'm going to go looking for something different for the next half hour. A little bit under a half hour, only about 24 minutes left of the grind. But fairly happy with the progress so far. You can see we're about to fill up the inventory, so I'll have to stop and figure out and sort that out. Not quite sure what I'm going to need to do here. Probably just go ahead and... Um, drop some random loot that's in my inventory that I clearly don't need. I don't really want to sell the junk loot because obviously we want to see that for the, the video, but I could track how much junk loot I do in fact discard and then do the math accordingly. But we will see. I'll figure it out, get the inventory all clear, but obviously we are back at where we started. The video. I had to try to find a safe spot. That up there was my attempt at it, but wasn't all that safe. But cut to another montage here. I will go find another farm spot to potentially grind at, and we'll go from there.
Alright everyone, we are back in Valencia City to recap the items we got and then go over the final profit numbers. Starting off, we have 5,306 junk loot, known as the Warder's Token Piece. We have 16 Trace of Violence, 1 Blackstone Weapon, 3 Kafra Stones, 1 Layla's Petal, 1 Event Charred Rock Fragment that will not count towards the final total being an event item. We will not count it towards uh, the final profit numbers. And then finally, we have scrolls written in an ancient language. We actually got a fair amount of these uh, coming in with 11 total scrolls written in an ancient language. So let's hop over to the breakdown of the profit for each item. So Warder's Token Piece, that's 5,306 of them, multiplied by 3,600 to give you 19,101,600 dollars traces of violence worth more than i thought are 16 of those times 92,500 for 1.48 million blackstone weapon we only had one that's 153,000 layla's pedal for the sake of ease we i wouldn't normally sell it to a vendor but it does go for 500,000 so we are going to count it as a 500,000 uh, dollar item Moving on to scroll written in an ancient language, we have 11 of those times 810,000 comes out to 8.9, or well, 8 million 910,000, 8.9 million essentially. We have three Kafra stones at 2.28 million a piece, that's 6,840,000 for a total profit of 36,984,600 dollars. Now, obviously. Money goes into those beast routes I use, simple crone meals, all the items that I use like potions, mostly just mana potions for this farm, as well as food to feed my pets later on. Uh, some of those uh, scrolls that I use as well you could factor in, but for the sake of ease of converting this, we're only going to convert profit because I don't want to track how many potions and everything I use throughout to factor that into the profit loss. Also, tax will not be included on this for the central market, as obviously scrolls are written language, Kafra stones, weapons, we would lose percentages off depending on how they sell in the marketplace. But for this, we are just going to track their value pre-sale without tax factored in. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. I want to give a big thanks to uh, Wilson, who suggested Pilaku um, Jail for me to do for an upcoming video. Thought it was a great way to start this episode, um, this episode series, and so that's what we went ahead and did. Like I said, next episode will be Basham Base, and it will be on the Nova Awakening. And so I hope to see you all there. Drop the video a like. Let me know if you... Uh, have any suggestions for changes that I should do, we'll appreciate those and take them into consideration for future episodes. Like I said, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.